Hi, my name is Jamie Bloss. I'm the liaison librarian to Allied Health and Dental Medicine at Lapis Health Sciences Library at ECU. I'm recording this today for Dr. Klesher and Dr. Bell's HSMA 3030 classes for 2021. And this is my contact information. So if you have any questions still after this recording or after the class, you can just contact me through my email. It's pretty quick. You can call me on my phone or um, feel free to use this link to make an appointment. And I'll make sure that everyone has access to this PowerPoint. So today the learning goals are to be able to access the library homepage, which is where all of the links that you'll need to conduct your research are located. Um, conduct a search using some different library databases to find articles on your topic, to identify peer-reviewed literature, and to be able to access and use RefWorks or any other type of citation management software. So I'll just be going over those briefly today. So first of all, our website, which is probably the most important part of this presentation, can be found at hsl.ecu.edu. And from there, we have the PubMed link, the Interlibrary Loan Service, Google Scholar, and other helpful information like research guides, many of which that I've linked to this PowerPoint presentation. So just go to hsl.ecu.edu. Oops this home page and then from here you'll be able to see um, links to the database listing here's your PubMed link right here and here's your CINAHL link and RefWorks if you want to use that um, some some people start their search in the one search bar which you can search for articles books websites but I typically like to start my search in PubMed or the different databases because you'll get more targeted articles and information and we'll just look for journal articles today for the assignment so one search might give you a bunch of other stuff as well we're just looking for journal articles so um, Let's take a sample research question and see how we can come up with the keyword terms in order to figure out what we need to put into the database to search. So first, my question is, how can we, do, how can we reduce length of hospital stay for patients with COVID-19? So depending on your question, you may have two elements or three elements that you're pulling out of your research question. It really just depends on your topic and what can be found on the topic. So for mine, my main things that I'm looking at are the length of hospital stay and COVID-19. So those are gonna be my keyword terms is length of hospital stay or length of stay and COVID-19. So now I can go into PubMed and just use those terms in order to search. So I'll go over here to PubMed and I'll search length of stay and COVID-19. And in this basic search, we don't need to use and or 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 not or anything like that. We can just simply put the search terms and click enter. And then from here, I get a bunch of different articles. This one looks especially great, length of hospital stay, systematic review. And from here, since I have about 2,000 results, I can also narrow it down to article types. So if I wanted a lit review or systematic review, which are higher levels of evidence, I could always click on one of those. If my topic is not COVID-19 related and might have literature going back further than five or 10 years, I could also limit by publication date to only get the most recent articles. I could also limit it to English language. So in any of the databases, you'll see filters here to help you narrow down your search results even more. The other thing that you can look at in PubMed is if we go to advanced search, I can see all I've typed in is length of stay COVID-19. But what PubMed is actually doing is it will automatically try to map your terms to other words that mean the same thing. So COVID-19, it might map it to SARS-CoV-2 or something like that. So if I click on this little carrot, this down arrow, I can see that all of this right here is actually what PubMed searched for when I only put in these couple of terms. So it also put in COVID-19 testing, severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, 
So if you're ever searching and you get some results that you don't really like what it's pulling, you could adjust your search by copying and pasting this back into the search box. And I could take out any term that I don't want and rerun my search. So one of the um, examples I always give for this is if I was doing a search on nursing as a profession and I just ran a quick search for that. So I'll just hit add to history. If I look at my search details, it brings up a lot of stuff on breastfeeding because that's a synonym for nursing, right? So um, if this was the case and I was just looking for nursing profession, I could always take my search here and pop it back into here and then take out the terms that I don't want and then rerun the search. So that's just, um, you, you definitely don't need to ever go into the details and look at this, but just for your information, just know that when you search a few terms, PubMed searches all of these things automatically for you. So that's PubMed, that's your first option to go to. Um, let's look at another example. Let's look at um, developing countries, healthcare immunizations. And then you'll see again, here's some results coming up about things happening in developing countries. And then again, you could, getting this many results, you might want to say, okay, well, let me look on at measles immunizations. And then you can get um, more information about measles vaccination in developing countries. So you may, even as you run your search, try to narrow down your search results a little bit more. Okay. Here's another way of breaking down your search. So if I wanted to use some additional terms for my research question about length of hospital stay and COVID-19, I might wanna put some terms like length of stay or length of hospital stay, COVID-19 or COVID or SARS-CoV-2. And I'm using this OR operator to tell the database search for length of stay or length of hospital stay because I'm okay if it comes up with either of those terms. So this is a way that you can do multiple searches at once just by typing in one search string, length of stay or hospital stay, and then using the operator AND in capital letters to combine it with COVID-19 or COVID or SARS-CoV-2. So rather than running one search that's length of stay, COVID-19, length of hospital stay, COVID-19, I can run all of those searches at once using this syntax. So I'm gonna copy and paste this into CINAHL and ProQuest just to show you how I could then take this search from PubMed over to other searches. So first I could pop that right into PubMed and look at my results as well. So they're somewhat slightly different than when I just searched only length of stay in COVID-19. And then I can go out to the other databases as well so let me try to go to CINAHL and I can run my search here in this search box. Now CINAHL searches a little bit differently where it will suggest um, subject heading terms to you. So you'll have to uncheck that box if you're just typing in your own keyword terms. You might also want to check the peer reviewed box and then hit search. So we get 676 results and here are all my search results. But if you notice, some of the results aren't super relevant to my topic. So if I wanted to narrow down my topic a little bit more using CINAHL, I can use the Suggest Subject Terms button and run two separate searches for each of my concept groups. So my first group is COVID-19. So I'll hit that and just hit search. So I'm not typing in all my terms at once like I just did. And I'll check off COVID-19 search database. So this is the second way of searching CINAHL. You can do your long search string like we've already done, or we can do it separately. And then my other one is 
length of stay. So I'll go ahead and search for that. So I'll check that box off. It says use length of stay. So very good search database. So now here I've got my two concept groups, COVID-19 and length of stay. And I will check off those from my search history and hit search with and. And now I get a very tidy 143 results and hopefully some more targeted search results. So that being said, searching is an iterative process, which means it's something that you might need to do a few separate searches in order to figure out what are your best search terms. So again, there's two ways to search in CINAHL. You can search your concepts separately with the suggest subject terms box checked or uncheck the box and you can put in your search terms and hit search just as keyword terms. Um, the last database that I want to show you is um, ProQuest. Let's go back to our PowerPoint for a second. So we've searched in CINAHL and I told you about the peer review checkbox. And you can also use different databases like ProQuest Search, the ABI Inform Collection, which is more like kind of business related, um, the Healthcare Administration database if you're ever researching on a topic in Healthcare Administration, and then we also have Health and Safety, Science Abstracts, and HealthStar. So these are just more databases that you can use your same keyword terms in in order to find more articles on your topic. So I'm going to go to Database List. P for ProQuest, and we're going to go to ProQuest Search, which is the biggest ProQuest database. So ProQuest has lots of different articles in it. It even has news articles and um, all different kinds of things. So I'll put in my search. And then the one thing I'm going to want to do right away is limit it to either peer-reviewed or hit scholarly journals. And then that's going to limit my search down a bit more. And I've already got some different articles coming up here, like more international articles than I got when I was searching in PubMed or CINAHL. Um, another thing is if you're search topic is more on the business side of things like maybe hospitals or hospital administration i would definitely try proquest um, because pubmed has a lot of biomedical like medicine articles so definitely if you're striking out with pubmed or CINAHL, try proquest and you may get some better results so let's talk about how to get the full text of the articles if you're in PubMed, you can just click on any article and you'll see these full text links come up on the right hand side. They won't always say PMC, sometimes they'll say Elsevier or Wiley, but these are the buttons that you'll click on to get the full text. But if you do see an article in PubMed that doesn't have these links, which sometimes happens, there's a couple of different ways to get the full text of the articles. So the first one would be our interlibrary loan service, which is just a free service where you put in your name, your email, and the citation of the article that you want, and they'll send you the PDF of the article. You can also try our Google Scholar link, which again, Google Scholar is linked on our library homepage. Sometimes they'll have um, the full text or they'll point you to the full text that the library has. And then lastly, um, you might try signing up for a free account in researchgate.net. This is a social media network of researchers and academics. And you can sign up at any point in your academic career. And then you can ask um, authors directly if they'll send you a PDF of an article. You just go to researchgate.net, paste in the title of the article, and ask them to send it to you. Also going over Ulrich's really quickly, if you have a journal that you find on another website or Google Scholar and you want to make sure that the article that you're getting from that journal is a peer-reviewed article, you can use the Ulrich's web database. So to get to that, just go back to the library homepage, go to that databases listing again, go to you for Ulrich's and click on that. And then 
any journal title. This is going to be the journal title, not the article. So let's say Journal of Hospital Administration. And we'll try to look and see. So I'm looking it up and it does not have the referee jersey there. So this means that it would not, these two would not be a peer reviewed article. However, if I look at the American Heart Hospital Journal, this has a little referee jersey. So this indicates to me that this is refereed or peer reviewed. You can also click on the journal title and scroll down and go to abstracting and indexing to see where this journal, where you could look to actually find it. So this is a very useful website, this Ulrich's web, um, especially if a faculty member or professor ever says to you, oh, look up some articles in this specific journal. And you're like, okay, where do I search for this? What database? So if they said American Heart Hospital Journal, you would know that you could find it in PubMed, Synal Complete, which we have both of those, and Scopus. So this can just be a useful website as a directory to kind of give you more information about a journal. Um, going back to the full text, this is the interlibrary loan form on our homepage. So you would just put your name, your email, and then as much information about the journal article as you can find, and then hit submit, and you're ready to go. You can also use our Google Scholar link right here on the homepage, which will help connect you to more of the ECU resources. If you're working from off campus and you go to PubMed, let's say you'll see these full text links as long as you use the link from our homepage. Um, and if you click on the actual link, if it doesn't say free full text, you'll usually be prompted to log in with your pirate ID and password. But if it's really giving you a hard time and you're having trouble getting access to the full text PDF articles at home, which are those PDFs that you need to actually turn in for your assignment, um, you can go to um, ECU VPN and you can download the VPN, which will make it seem like you're browsing from on campus when you're at home. So just Google ECU VPN and then open a VPN connection. You'll have to select Mac or Windows depending on what type of computer you have. I'm selecting Windows and you'll say install the Cisco AnyConnect software. You'll use your pirate ID and password to log in. And then this box will come up and you'll hit connect and it'll ask you to sign in. And then once you've signed in on this um, VPN client, you'll be able to browse at home like you're on campus. So that's the VPN. You don't have to use VPN. It can just make browsing from home and finding the articles a lot easier. So lastly, we have a bunch of research guides that are really helpful that give you a lot of information. The one that's really important is the APA 7th edition guide. We also have a guide for health services and information management. We have one on how to conduct a lit review, and we have a lit guide on more searching basics. So if you wanted more information on those ands and ors, you could go to this lit guide. Lastly, um, if you'd like to use a citation manager to help you keep track of your references list and also generate that references list, we have access to RefWorks here at ECU. Um, but I also recommend using these open source ones, Mendeley and Zotero. For only, you know, 10 or so, 10 to 15 references, you can probably just write them out, type them out by hand. Um, but we do have a YouTube channel with videos where you can find out more information about how to use RefWorks. So to review, um, some of the ways to get the full text of the article is the Interlibrary Loan Request Form, ResearchGate.net, and Google Scholar. When you're starting research on your topic, you'll probably want to use PubMed, CINAHL Complete, and ProQuest. And CINAHL Complete's just listed as CINAHL on our homepage. 
So definitely if you're not having luck in one of these, try the other two. And then Zotero, RefWorks, and Mendeley. These are citation management software where you can save citations and it'll make for you your bibliography or your references list. And lastly, I hope that you'll fill out the evaluation from the in-person class or for the video just to let me know how I can keep improving um, the services. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email again, everything is right here, blosschain19 at ecu.edu. So thank you so much for watching and definitely reach out to me if you're having trouble finding literature on your topic.